Good morning, everyone. I hope you can see me fine. I'm sitting in my car outside of PetSmart getting my dogs groomed. Um, I just thought I'd do a, a periscope while I'm sitting here because uh, I haven't done a prophecy scope since oh, maybe Sabbath, I think was the last, and I want to do a prophecy scope during the week. I know this is not the norm for me. I normally do a cooking scope, but since I'm not home, I can't do a cooking scope. But welcome to those coming in. Invite your followers and share this Periscope out. Um, good morning, Erlene. Welcome. Good to see you. I, I didn't tell you I was going to come on Periscope because I wasn't sure I was. But since I'm sitting in my car, as you can see, oh, you just got home. Well, I'm sitting in my car outside PetSmart because I just got my dogs checked in to uh, get them groomed. So I thought, well, I'll come on here while they're in there getting groomed. I may not have this real long scope, but I thought I better... I better come on here because the way th the way the world is going, we know that that time is is running out for everybody. And if people don't don't come out of Babylon, it's going to be too late. And I hope that that after this periscope, that people will understand the ramifications of the situation, and will come out of Babylon while they still can. I just hope and pray that I, that people will come on and accept what I have to say. I know this is going to be a, this is probably a, a, um, a rough time for people. You know, there's not too many people. Um, how do you know if you're in Babylon? I will explain that. Um, I will explain that, but let me, let me send up a prayer first. Dear Father in heaven, I pray that this periscope will be important to a lot of people, Lord, that it will be a one that they need to hear because this truth needs to get out, Lord. We're in a situation where it's not going to be very long before the time of trouble is going to be upon us and then your second coming, Lord. And if we don't get this message out to the sin-sick, dying world, people are not going to be ready for it. And they're going to take the mark of the beast and they're going to be lost. I just pray that you'll help the people that come in here to understand what, what the situation is, is about. That they will be ready for what's to come. That they will accept and, and get into the word of God and tell others tell their family members this world is is a sad sick world lord people are are dying for lack of knowledge all the time lord and i'm i'm one of these people that i want to get this truth out even if it, it costs me my life lord or if i i take a lot of harassment or or uh, persecution i'm willing to do it lord for your sake so I just pray that you'll be with the people that come in here be with me that i that i can give this message out let it go forth to the whole world let no te technical difficulties arise, Lord. Let this periscope go smoothly. And let those that come in here, hear. And those that don't don't want to hear, Lord, let keep them at, at bay and keep them out of here. I pray that you go with me and everybody here. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I got quite a few people in here. Welcome to those that just came on. Um, and those that were in Philip's periscope this morning, I want to apologize. I know that some of you that are here now were not in Philip's periscope, but I had said some things to some person that I shouldn't have said, and, I, and Philip called me out on it. Well, he should have, because the person was, um, he was very disrespectful, and I I said some things that I shouldn't have said. I, I mishandled, you know, and I'm trying to save people, but I guess sometimes my actions get the better of me sometimes, and I say things that I don't really intend to say but you know that's how it goes the devil's out there working real hard but i apologize to philip for what had ha what had transpired all you need to do is go back and watch that periscope and you'll see what i'm talking about i felt really bad about it afterwards you know something and the first thing i did is i asked god to forgive me that's what we have to do we have to ask god for to give us for forgive us for anything that we may have done wrong to anybody you know because like i said i want people to be saved but sometimes my my uh, better judgment gets the best of me and I end up saying and doing things that I really shouldn't have done, you know, and I, I feel bad about it afterwards. But I, now that I've apologized to God and asked God to forgive me and asked, apologized to Philip, I feel so much better about it. I just hope and pray that that person that came in there that accepts what Jesus has to offer. You know, people don't understand. This world is terrible. Good morning, Tanisha. Welcome. Good to see you. This world is, is terrible. And if people don't get into the word of God or they don't help. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. If people don't get into the word of God and they don't, don't uh, heed what, what the Bible says, they're not going to make it. I don't want to be the bearer of bad tidings, but we know what's in the Bible. We know what the end of the story is. And we have to be prepared for the end of the story. There's a lot of persecution coming our way and we're going to have to be prepared for that. You know, sometimes I feel I'm persecuted every day, but 
we're going to be persecuted for our faith. And I just pray that everybody will be willing to to uh, die for their faith if you have to. I'm willing to die for my faith. It's not going to be easy, I know. But I'm willing to die for my faith if, if all necessary. Um, welcome to those in Periscope for the very first time. I had some guy come into his car and looked at me like I was talking to him. I think he thought I was crazy or something. So I'm going to have that. So if if, uh, um, if I act funny, it's because somebody's looking at me weird. Um, uh, I think so, Tanisha. I have not seen him come on any of the other periscopes that I've been coming into. I still share on, on Twitter because it's a very important. Um, yes, it is. It is right around the corner. He has not been following me on any of the periscopes I've been going into. And he has, I haven't done, a, well, I did do a periscope on Sabbath and he didn't come into that one. So I'm thankful for that. He didn't come into that one. So maybe He's decided, he's, he promised me that he wouldn't. Oh, thank you for the super hearts, Erlene. Yeah, he promised me that he was going to leave me alone. And I'm thankful for that because I don't need that. Nobody needs that harassment, you know. So if he comes in here, I, I will know how to deal with it. But I'm just thankful that that he hasn't been following me because I, I go to one where they're out of Mexico called Canamix and where they rescue dogs and they have surgeries and stuff. And he's been following me in there. Because I'm a super fan in there and he follows me in there and he says real bad mean things in there. So I'm hoping and praying that he doesn't because I've been going back in there every night when they, when they scope and he hasn't been there. So let's just hope and pray that he stays out. Anyway, it's people like him that need this truth. He needs to hear the truth whether he likes it or not. And it's like Arlene said, the National Sunday Law is right around the corner. And yes, it is. It's coming on upon us. And if we're not ready for it, we're going to be caught you know we got to take a stand because there's coming a day when when then when if the holy spirit is gone withdrawn which it will be and we can't haven't got the holy spirit to lean on anymore we're going to have to know what to do we're going to of course god is going to take care of us of course he said that our bread and water would be sure a lot of people are scared that they're not going to they're not going to um be provided for during the tribulation but you know he did provide for the israelites out in the wilderness didn't he they, they wandered in the wilderness for 400 years, and he he, he took care of them. He fed them manna. However, they, they complained about the manna. They probably got tired of eating it. You know, I suppose I would have too, but they shouldn't have been complaining because God did provide for them. He's going to provide for us again. Welcome, Steelers fan. Good to see you. He's going to provide for all of us during that time. We just have to rely on him. We're, we better rely on him at all costs. Rely on him 24-7. Because I am one of these kind that I don't want to take the mark of the beast. Uh, yeah, that's right. We have to be grateful. Guys, we have to give thanks. Yeah, we have to give, we, exactly, Tanisha, we have to give thanks. We, we have to give thanks because, you know, it's very difficult to take the trials and tribulations that we're going through and praise the Lord for them. But if we don't do it, we're not going to have strength enough to get through what's coming on this earth. And we know what's coming on this earth is going to be terrible. It's going to be so so terrible that we're not going to want to want to be here for it. We're going to want to be, have, you know, be laid to rest. And I asked the Lord many times, says, if I can't make it through the time of trouble, please lay me to rest. Because I certainly don't want to go the wrong way. I'm sure none of us do. But we don't know the end, end from the beginning like God does. And I just pray that. If I have to go through the time of trouble, then I'll get through it. And that's why these trials and tribulations are here. They're to strengthen us. We have to meet those challenges head on. You know, you get through one trial and there's another one there. But you have to praise God for them anyway. I praise God all the time. You know, I praise him day and night. We have to never forget to praise him in all things. But let's get into the, <clears throat> into the title. People want to know what Babylon is. Somebody asked me, how do you know you're in Babylon? Well, it's not just Sunday worship. Basically, um, you got to come out of Babylon because that's su that's Sunday worship. That's total confusion. You need to come out of Sunday because there's a day coming when the National Sunday Law is going to be instituted, and that is the mark of the beast. And you either have the seal of God, where you have God on one hand, and you have uh, you have man on the other side. You either have the seal of God, or you take the mark of the beast. There's no in between in this situation. It's one or the other. You have to be prepared for that. So people that are going to church on Sunday, it is not the day of worship. Not according to the Bible. God did not institute Sunday as a worship day. The ones that instituted Sunday as a worship day are the Catholics. Because they chose to do that. They said, well, we can change the, 
change Sunday and we're going to make or we're going to make change Sabbath and we're going to make Sunday the worship day. And they made that day holy for years and people have been following that. Welcome to those coming on and thank you for being here. And people have been going to church on Sunday for many years thinking they're doing right. I did the same thing. Thinking I'm think I hi, good to see you. Welcome. And Oh, I'm doing just fine. I'm sitting outside PetSmart waiting. Uh, just got my dogs checked in for grooming. So I thought I'd do a periscope while they're in there. Because it's going to take a while. But I won't be on that as long as, long as they're going to be in there. But anyway, um, people think have been thinking for years that because they're going to church on Sunday, that that is the right, right way to go to church on. I'm here to tell you, it's not. It's pagan. God never commanded us to keep Sunday. People keep Sunday because of the resurrection. But there's nowhere in the Bible where it says to go to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. I've been reading it four times now. This is my fourth time. And on January 1st, on Monday, there'll be my fifth time of starting to read through the Bible. I have never seen it in one place. Not one. It's just not there. But the Catholics have decided to take that day and change it. They have that actually, if you want to, if you, if you want to uh, think about it, talk about it. They have desecrated the Sabbath by bringing Sunday in. That's a desecration. And that's a di direct disobedience to God. I'm not saying that people don't love the Lord, but they are really not walking with the Lord as they should because they are following man. <clears throat> they're following man's traditions and not keeping the word of God. The word of God does not say go to church on Sunday. Welcome. It does not say to go to church on Sunday. It says quite the contrary. Exodus 20 verses 8 to 11 talks about keeping the seventh day Sabbath. The very first word in that, in that passage is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Because he knew that people would forget to keep the Sabbath. And they have. Look at the whole world. They're geared towards Sunday. They're going to remain that way, unfortunately, because they don't know the truth. They're not told the truth. The pastors won't tell them the truth. They won't tell them at all. They keep them in darkness. Um, I am not bashing the faith. I'm not. I'm. The, I'm not bashing anybody. I am telling you the truth, and I have an obligation as a Seventh Day Adventist and as a Christian to tell you the truth. I am not going to to uh, um, be be sorry for telling the truth because it's, the truth will set you free. I am not bashing anybody. Going to church on Sunday is a sin and it will be when the national sunday law comes because if you are still going to church on sunday when the national sunday law comes you will take the mark of the beast by default and when you do that your salvation is gone you have you have closed the door of probation on yourself and you and you are lost for eternity um that's right i'm telling you the truth and if people in here don't want to don't want to heed don't want to heed that person that's saying, "Oh Lord, if you don't want to accept this, then 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 I suggest that you that you close up this periscope and leave. You won't bother me one bit." But that's right. We're out to warn others, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm warning others to come out of Babylon. Babylon is nothing but confusion. Sunday is confusion. People that go to church on Sunday, it's nothing but confusion. There is nowhere in the Bible that God says to go to church on Sunday. It is, it is going to be the, te the Sabbath is going to be the test of our faith at the very, very, oh, uh, you know, I'm here. I'm going, I'm not going to shut up. And if you don't want to hear it, then you can just leave because I am not going to shut up. I'm going to keep talking. It's people like you that need to hear this. You need to hear it badly. And I am not going to shut up. So if you don't want to hear it, then hit the X and leave. You won't make me mad, but <clears throat> you are oozing for a bruise and you're oozing to get blocked. If you keep saying one more derogatory thing, you will get blocked because people don't, uh, well, then, you, then you're going to have to behave because I will block you. And I can make you leave by blocking you. So please, just behave. That's right. We have to tell people. And I'm going to tell you whether you want and whether you want to hear, whether you want to hear the truth or not. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and block you right now. He has to be blocked. There he's blocked. Yep. He, he wanted to be blocked, so I blocked him. <laughs> he pierced an ass. I'm not going to think, think, say twice. That person probably wouldn't have listened anyway. You know, I, I don't apologize for blocking people in here. He's nothing but a distraction. So if you see a distraction, please take care of it for me. Because, yeah, bye. If you, if you see any distractions that are, that are contrary to the word of God or they're, they're saying things that they shouldn't, block them or report them. Because I don't have to put up with that and nobody else does either. I will, call, I will block anybody that I can. I did have one last week that I couldn't block that he had a Twitter account and pray the Lord that he doesn't come in here. If he does, I'll know how to handle him because 
he, as long as he's not derogatory, he can be in here. But when they start saying derogatory things, calling people names, it's, oh, there he is. Uh-oh. There's the guy. If you watch, go ahead and block that guy, please. Go ahead and block that guy. I'm going to have to block him right now. Um, I see I can't block him. Yeah, yeah, he's back. I can't block him. He just has a Twitter account, and, he, and, he's, and he's nothing but a, uh, he's nothing but a, a, a ter person that, um, yeah, that's right. We're, but we're going to have to pray for that person, that, that Jimmy, because he, he's, he's very derogatory. If he doesn't say anything in here, I won't, I won't get rid of him. But his, his username alone is very offensive to me. And I wish he'd change it because I do not like his username. Hi, Mark. Good to see you. That username of his. Hi, Carrie. Good to see you. And Erlene, welcome back. Um, I just want to let you know that once you're coming back in, the guy that's been harassing me is back on here. We have to be prepared for that. I am going to report. I've tried to report him to Twitter. And I haven't been able to do it because they said there's no no such a username exists, but I know that it does exist because I see it when I go onto Twitter. So I'm going to but just just pray for me that I'm able to, to to contact Twitter and able to tell him because he's a he's harassing me and he won't leave me alone. He keeps coming in my periscopes and I don't want him in here. He's not welcome. As you can see, he's here. He hasn't said anything yet, but if he does say anything. We're going to have to report him. We're going to have to do what we can because I don't have to take this. In fact, I'm going to pray right now. Dear Father in heaven, I pray that you be with that one in here that's harassed me. He's a very um, sick person, Lord. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I just pray that you keep him from saying things that he shouldn't be saying, that he doesn't harass me anymore, that he leaves me alone, and that he will only say good things in here. We don't need this kind of Lord. I didn't ask for this, and I don't want it. So I pray that you be with us, Lord. Be with me. Know how to deal with it. In Jesus' name, amen. I just pray that he doesn't cause any trouble. He hasn't so far, but... I, I figured as sure as shooting as I start as sharing on, par, on on Twitter, he's going to come in here again. He promised me he would leave me alone. You know what his promises mean? A big fat goose egg. His promises mean nothing. You know, people can promise you all the time, but if they don't keep their word, then their promises mean nothing. I should have known that he wasn't going to he wasn't going to be truthful. He said he'd leave me alone. Promise? Yeah, right. He's back in here again. He's not leaving me alone. He's back to his old tricks again. You know, but we got to pray. That's why I prayed for him. He needs help. He's a sick person. He's miserable, and he wants me to be miserable too. But I don't choose to be miserable. I choose to be good, you know, because the Lord has done so many good things for me. You know, he has blessed me financially. People knew my situation, my finances. I am still in bankruptcy, of course, but he has helped me financially in the fact that I'll have a little bit more money, able to pay my bills every month, be able to do things I need to do, maybe put a roof on my house, get things done in my home that I need to do to get it to to fix it up to a little bit better you know and that's wonderful and i know the lord did it it was the lord that did it it wasn't anybody else because i did not expect to get a tenant for my property as fast as i did and for them to ask for what they'd ask for because a lot of you know that it's with a property management company right now and they asked for 995 dollars for a two-bedroom a person came along and said they would pay that $995. I was about, I about fell over on the floor when I realized that somebody was willing to pay it. But I thought, praise the Lord. See, that's what I'm saying. If you're obedient to the Lord, he's going to be there for you. Oh, and I know he's blessed me tremendously. And I'm sure he's going to bless other people too. And these people that, you know, come in here and say, God doesn't exist. They don't know what they're saying because they don't have the benefits of God working miracles in their life like I have. And other people in here have done the same thing. He has blessed me financially and I hope he blesses a lot of you too. We just have to put our faith and trust in God. Do what God asks in everything, 100%. And that means keeping the Sabbath. Those people that don't keep the Sabbath, you know what? They are missing a tremendous blessing because they really don't realize that by not keeping the Sabbath, welcome, Philip. And I, 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 do, I do apologize again, Philip, for the way I acted in your periscope. It was not becoming of me. I, I, I said the wrong thing, and, and I realize now that my, my actions got the better of me, and I promise it's never going to happen again. And I apologize for, for commenting back when you, you're right. When a person prays, it's, it's disrespectful to, to comment back, and I, and I appreciate you telling me that in Messenger. Praise the Lord for people like Philip because he lets people know when they're doing wrong. And that's what I need. We all need to be um, reproved. Actually, he was reproving me of what I did. Um, yeah, okay, Erlene. I'm sorry that you're having problems. But anyway, we got to come out of Babylon. Those that are going to church on Sunday, 
They don't realize that it's a pagan worship day. God never commanded us to keep Sunday holy. But yet the whole world has kept Sunday for years. I did the same thing, not really realizing that I was keeping the wrong day. And I'm glad that I, I found out when I did. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. That I found out about Sunday when I did. I wish I'd have found out about it sooner, but thank the Lord I found out about Sunday. And I will never go back to Sunday again. Now I have family members that, that still go to church on Sunday. I'm hoping and praying that by me sharing these things like this on Facebook and Twitter, that they'll, they'll see it and they'll come out of the Babylon too. People don't realize. And it, you know something? It doesn't just have to be Sunday worship to be in Babylon. Being disobedient to God in everything. You know, I have an ex-husband that I know what he's doing. And on Christmas Eve, I told him that whether he knew it or not, he was in Babylon. That was very hard for me to do that. But I told him, I said, you are in Babylon because of what you are doing. You don't have to just worship on Sunday and be in Babylon. It's your daily life doing things that are contrary to the word of God. You can be in Babylon for that. He is fornicating with a woman that he knows he should not be doing it. Our son has told him and I have told him, but he, he refuses to come out of Babylon. We have to tell people. We have to tell them because it's our responsibility. I knew that he might not like it, which he didn't say anything. A lot of people won't. You can tell them that they're doing something wrong. And when they know they're doing wrong, especially him, he's very, very silent. He doesn't have a comeback because he knows he was found out. But people in here will have a comeback. But we just have to know how to deal with the comeback and help them. You know, I don't want anybody to be lost. And that's why I'm adamant about this. In my Phillips Periscope, I said what I said to that person. I approached it the wrong way. I realize now I shouldn't have said what I said, but I want that person to be saved. I want that person to come out of atheism. I have a grandson that's in atheism. Um, uh, it could possibly be, but you know something? I have asked the Lord to forgive me for that. That is just the point. I've asked the Lord to forgive me. Yes, I'm divorced, but you don't understand the situation there. You know, that is, that is, that is my business. What is ha what happened in our, in our, in our, in our marriage. But I'm not going to go into that. But the Lord has forgiven me. I've asked him to forgive me. And so has he. He's asked, we've asked the Lord to forgive us. And I know he has. Yes, it can be part of Babylon. But that's just one part of it. There's many parts to Babylon. Going to church on Sunday is the biggest part of Babylon. That is, so, that is totally confusion. People don't understand. Babylon is nothing but confusion. They're in confusion when they go to church on Sunday. They think they're doing right. Because... The pastors certainly aren't going to tell them because they don't want to because they're afraid if they say something, the people are going to leave the church because they're telling the truth. And I'm here to tell anybody, if you're in a Sunday keeping church and the pastor isn't telling you what you need to know, then you better leave that church. That's right. It is. It's false worship and false teachings. Exactly. Those pastors that, that preach on Sunday, most of their teachings are false teachings because they're not going to tell people the truth they're not going to tell people that the sabbath welcome stacy good to see you they're not going to tell people the truth that that the saturday is the sabbath because they know that if they start telling them that the people are going to leave and they're going to find a church on sabbath to go to welcome stacy good to see you well, welcome deborah good to see you welcome that they they know if the people find out the Saturday's the Sabbath, they're going to want to leave the church and rightfully sure. Oh, it's good to see you. Wonderful. I'm glad you got your notifications on. Um, that's right. It's, it's, it's sun worship. It's an abomination. Um, uh, you say your pastor teaches you from the Bible, he, if you, but if he's a Sunday keeping pastor, is he watering it down? The thing of it is they're teaching a watered down gospel. They're putting a spin on it. They're not preaching the Bible the way it should be preached. They're telling you what they want you to hear and what you to want you to know instead of what you really should know. That's the sad part of it. They're keeping you in darkness. They're teaching you false doctrine. If they're not telling you that Saturday is the Sabbath, that's right, they're not teaching all of it. If they're not telling you that Saturday is the Sabbath, they are keep teaching you false doctrine because they are not telling you the truth. Sunday keeping pastors, even the Seventh-day Adventist preachers, all preachers are responsible for their flock. 
They are to tell their flock exactly the truth and not water it down. But the thing of it is, that's right, they don't want to read the fourth commandment. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. Um, that's right, he isn't a new age God. But if the pastor isn't going to tell you the truth, and they're going to keep you in darkness, then you better come out of that church. Because you're going to stay in darkness as long as you're in a church that is not preaching the truth. That's why I came out of the Lutheran church. Once I went to the evangelistic meetings and I heard the truth, I knew I had to come out. I could not stay in there because I knew I was not going to hear the truth from the pastors. Because basically, it's the same thing every Sunday. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and maybe some of the some of the books that Paul wrote. But that's about it. They never preach on the Old Testament. I never heard a, 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 any um, sermon on the Old Testament. They never talk, talk about the fourth commandment. They never preached about the commandments because they know that they are not telling the truth. Um, yeah, I know they don't. They, they don't want to read the fourth commandment because they know it's going to, it's going to find fault. You know, oh, I'm just great. And thank you for coming in. Um, that's right. You have to ask. You have to get into the Word of God. And you have to study it for yourself. Um, yeah, we do. We all we want to hear and know. That's right. The whole whole book of Revelation. That's the point. A lot of your Sunday keeping preachers won't even tackle the book of Revelation. I think a lot of it is because of the symbolism. Um, and I was not Catholic. I was not Catholic. I was a Lutheran. I was a Lutheran before I became a Seventh Day Adventist. Um, and, and I did not understand anything. You know, I, I would, I did not un know what I'm telling you now because it was never taught in the Lutheran church. We were never taught about the mark of the beast, never brought anything up like that. I didn't know about it until I, I went to the Adventist evangelist meetings and then I heard about it and it was all new to me. And I told my husband at the time, I says, this is something I've never heard before. You won't hear it in the Sunday keeping churches. You know why? Because it's considered gloom and doom. Your Sunday keeping preachers are prosperity preachers. Oh, you preach about money. And basically, that's all they're looking for. They're not looking for anything else but money. And that's why they won't tell the truth. Because as long as you put that money in, the, in that collection plate and keep it coming, that's what they're looking for. Um, nope, they're, nope, they're sure not. They, they sh Then they didn't. They're not going to teach the truth exactly. They, they sure didn't. And it wasn't until I went to, to, to the meetings that I found the truth out. It was all new to me. And it was it was a beautiful truth, but it was something that was all new new to me. Um, oh, you oh wow, see Arlene, you came, Arlene, you came out of the Baptist Church and the Church of God, so you're in two churches. I was just in a Lutheran church, you know, because I was a Lutheran my whole life. But to hear the truth, that, as I'm telling you, was really hard for me to accept at first. But I had to accept it because we they went through the Bible step by step, you know, the commandments. And when I heard about the Sabbath commandment, about the mark of the beast, I had to heed it. Um, yeah, I know. They're not, you know, that's the sad thing, Mark, that the, teacher, that the schools aren't even teaching the truth. The children aren't learning what they need to learn. It is very, very sad. But the, yeah, it's, it, it's a lot of confusion. That's what I'm saying. We need to come out of confusion. If you know that you're in a, in a church that's teaching confusion, come out of there. Because the Bible says... Come out of her, my people, that you receive none of her, that you partake not of her sins and receive none of her plagues. I don't want anybody to take the mark of the beast, but we know a lot of people are going to because they have never been taught what they're supposed to be told. Now, he, you are held accountable for what you do know, however. If you come in here and you hear the truth, you're held accountable for that, for hearing the truth. It's what you do with the truth that you've heard and that you know that, that is what God... Um, uh, uh, that you're accounted for. A lot of people will come in here and hear the truth and they turn their back on it. You can't turn your back on the truth because if you turn your back on the truth, that's disrespectful to God. It's disobedient to God. There, that guy's back again. We have to pray for that guy. I prayed for him before. You cannot block him. I don't think he'd report him because he doesn't have a, a profile here on, on Periscope. He's only got a Twitter profile. I've tried to I've tried to report him to Twitter and I can't report him, but I'm going to try again because he's harassing me. He's following me everywhere I go. We need to we need to to get this guy out of here. We need to get him off Periscope completely. But anyway, people just don't understand that when they go to church on Sunday, what they're doing, they're disobedient to God. They say, well, the other nine commandments are valid, but I don't have to keep the fourth one. 
Yes, you do. You have to keep the fourth commandment because our, our faith is it depends on it. Our life, our salvation depends on it. Now, I'm going to say this. Just because you're a Sabbath keeper does not necessarily mean you have a ticket to heaven or you're going to go to heaven. That's not what I'm saying. But at the end of time, when, when our faith is being tested and the National Sunday Law is upon us, you either have the seal of God, which is the Sabbath, or you'll take the mark of the beast. There's no in-between here. You can't sit on the fence. You can't say, well, I'm not going to keep the Sabbath, but I'm not going to take the mark of the beast either. It doesn't work that way. Because if you are going to church on Sunday, when the National Sunday Law is instituted, you will be taking the mark of the beast by default. Um, yeah, he's like gum stuck. You're right, Early. He's like gum stuck to my shoe. I can't, can't seem to get rid of him. You know, but we have to pray for people like that. He's nothing. He harasses me. He follows me everywhere I go. I don't really want him in here. I don't even like his username. His username is disgusting to me. It's vulgar. I don't care for that username. He may be sitting lurking, lurking back. I haven't seen him post any, any comments yet. So maybe maybe that's good. He's just going to lurk and he's just going to he's just going to watch what the comments are. But I wish he'd get out of here. That 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 username of, of his is disgusting. I've tried to block him. Like I said, I can't block him because it's only he's only got a Twitter profile. And I've tried to report him to Twitter, and they said no such person, no such uh, username exists. And it does, but I can't, I can't block him. So, we'll see what what happens. But anyway, people think that that the Sabbath isn't that important. Wow, a lot of people have heard, have told me, well, when Jesus died on the cross, he did away with the commandments. Since when did he do away with the commandments when he died on the cross? Um, I'm hoping they can. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that they can. But when people people say, well. When Jesus died on the cross, he did away with the commandments. Where does it in the Bible does it say he did away with the commandments? He said he came to fulfill the law and not to not to de up, de abolish it. Yeah, I know. He's on here, Mark. He comes on Periscope through Twitter. And it's only because I share the, the um, Periscopes on Twitter that he comes in here. But my contention is this. Nobody else has ever done this to me. He is the only one that has ever done this to me because I share on pair, uh, on Twitter, he decides to come in here and harass me. That is not right. I haven't had anybody else. And I've been sharing on Periscope, per sharing on Twitter ever since I've been doing Periscopes. And he's the very first one that's done it. What's his username? Jimmy Balls Suck. That's what, what, what his username is. And if people, if, if, if you people could, could do me a favor and help me get this guy off of Periscope, I'd appreciate it because you can't report him through Periscope because he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a handle here on Periscope. It's a Twitter handle. I've tried to report him through through Periscope and they have not got back with me and I've told him what his username is. We have and I, I need your help because if, if you can help me and I'll do I'm I'm gonna do my part too. I will report him again today. I will go on Twitter and I will do everything I can to report he's got two two usernames. Open my twatter and Jimmy Ball Suck. Both of those we need to get those those are vulgar and vile disgusting names and that person is vile and disgusting um i i don't know had to report him on twitter or something because he's he's harassing me he's on here again and he'll try and he does everything he can to to make me upset and i'm not going to let him do that to me today welcome back carrie those i'm sure, sure some of you are probably freezing up just go out and come back in um yes i have but i can't block him I can't block him, Philip, because he has a Twitter profile. When I try to block him, it said, um, sorry, we've encountered a problem. Please try again. Because it, um, Erlene has tried to block him the same thing. I tried to block him without, when, his, when he first popped in, with you know, before he even um, actually gets all the way in, when it says he joined, I tried to block that way. It gives, still gives me an error. So I cannot block him because he's just got a Twitter profile. So that's on, I don't know, he has to be reported through Twitter. It's terrible to have people like that. And Philip, you're lucky he didn't come into yours since I was on there. You know, he, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't. But it, it's terrible when you have people like this. But you know, it goes to show you what kind of world we're living in. It's a very sad, sick world that people have to do this to other people. That, that they go so far as to harass you and say that they're not going to bother you anymore. And his work, like I said, his promises mean nothing. Because he promised he would never come on my periscope again. Look, he's back again. I do not believe him. I mean, he could take his belief and 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 uh, put it in the crapper because his his belief is is I don't believe it. You know, that's right. He certainly is. He's working very very hard and he's working hard through that guy to to, to try to destroy me. I know. That's what he's doing. Satan does not like it that I give these messages, so he's trying to do everything he can to destroy me. Um, well, no, he hasn't been commenting, Erlene. He's been lurking. 
He has not been he has not been commenting. He's been lurking because I haven't been able to block him because it said I couldn't block him because every time I try to block him, you know, he'll come back with another comment. So maybe I can't see his comments as I tried to block him, but even he has a Twitter profile. That's a good thing. If you can't see his comments, you don't know what he's saying, but he keeps coming back. So I'm hoping that he'll stay out of here, you know, but we got to pray for people like that. Welcome, Dana. Good to see you. But if you guys can do, uh, if you can make note of his uh, username, go back and watch the replay. Make note of his username and then report, help him report report to Twitter for me. I would appreciate it because I cannot, for some reason, report it to Twitter. They they say his username does not exist and yet it shows up that it is there. So I don't know what's going on. But anyway, we need to re, to come out of Babylon. If, we, if any of us are in Babylon, um yeah, I know. I did too, but he hasn't commented. I haven't seen his comments either. I know. I can't. I'm glad I can't see his comments either. But just the fact that he joined my Periscope when he promised me he would not come in here anymore, makes me say that his, you know, his, him saying his promises mean nothing. He might take the, it might take it like tissue paper, throw them away because I, they mean nothing. You know, I don't believe people like that. But anyway, I just hope and pray that if anybody's in here going to church on Sunday, that you will come out of Babylon because you don't realize that you are in Babylon. You're in confusion because Mark 7, 7 to 9, yeah, 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 he'll, he'll go away. He's not going to get my attention too much because I can't see his comments anyway, so it's a good thing, you know. But you need to come out of Babylon because Mark 7, 7 to 9 talks about, you know, by your work, you're um, honoring God by your tradition. And people don't understand. That's all... <clears throat> <clears throat> that's all Sunday is, is just tradition. People d don't understand that. It's tradition brought on by the Catholic Church. We know that Constantine, back in 421 AD, decided to, to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. And people have been going to church ever since. They don't realize what they're doing. They're disobeying God. A lot of them don't know. Yes, they haven't been told. But the ones that do know and continue to go to church on Sunday, I've had many people come in here and say, well, I'll just wait until the National Sunday Law comes, and then I'll then I'll change. That's a little too late. You have to do it before the National Sunday Law is instituted. Because if you don't, um, if you don't do it before before the National Sunday Law is instituted, you're going to be taking the mark of the beast. I didn't see what the what the uh, uh, if they had a rude comment, Tanisha. Thank goodness I didn't see it. <laughs> Um, thank goodness I didn't see it. If they did, I didn't see it or I wasn't paying attention. So please just report the ones that have rude comments because you're going to get those. Those kind of people, you know what it is? People like that with rude comments, they're miserable and they want everybody else to be miserable too. You know, but I just pray for them. Um, you're right. You're exactly right. I agree with you. I agree with you, Dana. It should be, that's right, Sunday through Thursday. Um, okay, it was a voted as abuse. Okay. Um, okay, good, good. Oh, he tried to comment. Oh, <laughs> well, good. He's trying to comment, but he can't, you can't see it. Um, okay, good. Well, that's probably why I don't see it. I didn't see the first one. If uh, I've been talking, maybe that's a good thing. You know, maybe that is a good thing. I'm not seeing some of his comments because I'm not, um, because I'm just trying to ignore the abuse in here. I'm trying to ignore the derogatory remarks because I feel if I ignore it long enough, they'll go away, you know, but, and that's what I intend to do. But anyway, if you have a family member that's in Babylon, that's going to church on Sunday, you need to tell them to come out. Um, oh, good. Yes, I am. I am too, Erlene. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you. It's because of you people that I come in here and do these periscopes because you're all very, very uh, loving and kind to me, even when I, when I don't deserve it, really, you know, and you're loving and kind and you help me through this situation, you know, because... You know, being being harassed and things like that is no fun. Leslie Nass was harassed, and she had to report hers, and and she's got the authorities looking after hers. But oh, see, I didn't, I don't see it. I do not see them, Merlene. So for some reason, they're not showing up on my phone. So maybe that's a good thing that they're not showing up. <laughs> uh, well, I don't, I don't see any of them. I'm not seeing any abusive comments right now. They're not coming up on my side. So maybe that's a good thing. But anyway, if you have a family member that's going to church on Sunday. And they're they're in Babylon. You got to pray for them and help them to come out. Help them to see that what they're doing is wrong. You know, like I said, I wish I'd have seen it a lot sooner. There, there he's back again. I wish I'd have seen it a lot sooner, but I didn't. Um, oh, thank you, thank you so much. I'm glad you say that, Mark. I, you know, and I'm going to support each and every one of you. Anyone that does periscopes, I'm right there. 
like Philip. But anybody that didn't come in Philip's periscope, um, wish him a happy birthday. Today's his birthday. He's 20 years old today, and he, he's still in here, I think. So wish him a happy birthday. It'll make him feel really good. I did when I realized it's his birthday. Um, oh, that's right. Don't allow the devil to use you. You know, that's it, it's sad when somebody allows the devil to... to uh, allow the devil to work on them like that and that's the way the world is so many people you're welcome philip and i hope your your birthday is a blessed one being in here philip makes me feel good that you've chosen to be in, come in my periscope um all good thank you Erlene. thank you so much i appreciate that will you guys take care of him maybe he'll, he'll get tired of it and he'll come out he'll stay out of here eventually you know but because i'm going to continue to do these periscopes i'm going to continue to share on twitter let him come in here i'll just ignore the brute I won't say a word to him. He'll leave me alone eventually because I'm not going to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, and, that, and, that, and that's what I'm, I'm going to do. I'm just going to ignore him. Yeah, happy birthday, Philip. And uh, 20 years old today. He doesn't look a day over 10, does he? He looks good. <laughs> you look good for 20 years old, Philip. But anyway, if you have any family members that are in Babylon, please help them to, to come out of Babylon because they don't realize what they're doing. Um, Oh, good, good, good. Please, if you can report his Twitter account, please do that because I cannot do it. Um, thank you. If, if anybody can go into your Twitter and report his account, please do that too. Uh, if you have Twitter, please go in there. Oh, I'm just fine. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome. You know, I'm so thankful that people come in and support me from, from day to day when I do these periscopes. It makes me feel good. It, it keeps me on the straight and narrow. And that's why I do these because you do support me so much. Um, because... You, you you are lovely people, and I love having you here. And it's because of you that I do these. Um, <coughs> oh, yeah, he probably is, Tanisha. That's all he is. Who knows? He may be a 12, 13-year-old kid for all I know, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm glad I don't see his comments. Praise the Lord. I told the Lord to keep the comments off of my side, and I don't see him. And I'm thankful that I don't see them. You know, praise the Lord. The Lord's doing good. You know, God is so good all the time. All the time, God is good. He's amazing. He's an amazing, amazing God, you know. And I can't hardly wait for the day that I'm going to spend eternity with him. I hope you all feel the same way because this world is terrible. It's getting worse and worse and worse. You can see what kind of people we have in the world. People don't care about other people. They're mean. They're vile. They're 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 derogatory. They say all all kinds of, of bad things. That's the way the world is. It revolves around mean, vile people. We just have to pray for those kind of people. Uh, yeah, he is. He's very immature. But you know, I just hope and pray that God deals with him and helps him to understand that he's very immature. I want him to be saved. You know, he may be, have a very bad username, but I want him to be saved just like I want anybody else to be saved. Anybody that comes in here, I want them to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why I'm doing this. I want him saved. And I want everybody saved. I want me saved myself. And I want you guys saved too. <clears throat> we all have to do what we can to help each other, you know. But if you have a family member that's in, in Babylon, bring them out. I know Carrie, Sierra, Sierra Carrie's got a lot of problems with family members not being in the truth. I think Valerie does the same thing too. That they're, they're not in the truth. You know, I wish that... I would have, oh, hi, doctor. Oh, good to see you. I wish I would have, um, that my family would have accepted the Sabbath before they passed away. But you know, at that time, when I uh, was a, start, became a Sabbath keeper, I, <clears throat> a lot of my family pa had already passed away. Uh, oh, your baby likes to tap for hearts. Oh, that's so cute, Dana. Oh, that's adorable. God bless your little baby. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right, Dana. I don't mind a bit. But anyway, you know, when I was in a Lutheran church, I wish I'd have heard about this a lot, a lot, to, a lot sooner. You know, like I said, they never preached about what I talk about the mark of the beast or Sunday worship. They never talked about that in the in the Lutheran churches. They won't because they know people are going to leave the church. Um, oh, that's why you exit and re-enter. Well, that baby just wants to have fun, Dana. That's pretty cute. <laughs> That's adorable. I, I understand, Dana, and no problem whatsoever. But you, I wish that, that, that they did preach more on the mark of the beast. I wish that more Sunday-keeping pastors would get into the book of Revelation. A lot of it's because it's symbolism. You know, that's what it is. 
it's too symbolic for them. They don't understand it, a lot of it, you know. And I have a Bible that I carry with me in my purse. It is the King James Version. It's just the right size to carry in my purse. <coughs> so if I have to read passages, I can read out of here. I know it is, the printing is small, but I think I can handle it. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm glad I do, too. Um, yes. Oh, yes, please. That's a good prayer. Thank you for that. Because the trolls can be absolutely terrible, you know. But we know we're going to have them. We're going to have scoffers in the last days, too. We know that. The Bible talks about scoffers. But, you know, I, I just like to tell the scoffers, scoff now and regret it later. They don't understand. There's going to be a day they're going to regret it. And it's going to be too late then. I don't want the scoffers to lose their salvation. No way. I wish they didn't scoff at all. But we know there's going to be scoffers. The Bible talks about it. Our family members, we know our family members are going to be scoffers someday too. Because our family members, the Bible talks about this too, are going to turn against each other. And we have to be willing to stand up for what we know to be the truth, whether the family stands up for with us or not. We don't want to go where our family is going because our families are. Mothers are going to turn against fathers, fathers against mothers, sons against daughters, and, and fathers against sons and things like that. We have to be willing to say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to yield to you. I'm going to stay in, in the truth no matter what. Um, yes, I know. I can hardly wait either. He is coming very, very soon. You know, the world is getting wax, is waxing worse and worse and worse. And we know it can't be very long now before Jesus returns. It is so short. But we, I'm here to tell you that if anybody in here... I know most of you don't, but there may be somebody in here that believes in the secret rapture. There is no such thing as a secret rapture. The rapture itself is not in the Bible. It actually means caught, caught up. It's the second coming of Jesus. But there is no secret rapture. The ones that preach the secret rapture, that's also false doctrine. That's, that's Babylon again. Because they're preaching something that doesn't exist. Because they like to say, well, Jesus is coming for the church. And then there's seven years of tribulation. And then he's coming for those that are, are left. Where is that in the Bible? Yeah, there is a rapture, but it's not secret. The, the thing of it is, they like to preach a secret rapture. Where he's coming secretly to get his church. But that's not biblical. There's no such thing as a secret rapture. Well, he's coming where every eye shall see him. Because you get in the book of Revelation where it says, Every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him. We know that he's coming for, for his church. We know he's coming. But he's only coming once. He's not coming twice. That's right. No, he's not. He's not coming before the tribulation. That is not biblical. He is coming after the tribulation. You are, you are, you are in deception. If your pastor has been preaching that to you, you are wrong. He is not coming before the tribulation. He is coming after the tribulation. Because Daniel 12, 1 talks about... There'll be a tribulation such as never was nor ever shall be. It is not biblical to say that Jesus is coming before the tribulation. He is coming after. Because Matthew 24, if you get into the book of Matthew 24, talks about the tribulation. And the sun's going to be darkened, and the moon's not, and the sun, the moon's going to be darkened, and the sun's not going to give its light. Jesus talks about it in Matthew 24. We know that he is coming after the tribulation. The reason I say that is because it's, um, is is um, well, yeah, that's true. That's that's true, um, Erlene. But we, we also know that Jesus is not coming before the tribulation for the simple fact that we we have to go through the tribulation. He he is not going to take us out of it. He's going to take us through it. If you remember back in Israel, he uh, back in Egypt, he did not take the Israelites out of out of Egypt. Now, did he? He didn't. They had to go through the the, the plagues there. They had to go through them. He didn't take them out of them. Um, that is not a lie. It is not a lie. He, we are going through the tribulation. He, we are going. I am not lying. I don't come in here to lie to anybody. And anybody in here is going to tell you we are not. We are, are going to go through the tribulation, because I am telling you right now the national Sunday law is coming, and you're going to find out pretty soon that when the national Sunday laws come, Jesus hasn't come yet. And if you're not on the right side of, of God, if you're not taking, having the seal of God, and you'll take the mark of the beast by default. And I don't apologize for telling you that because that is the truth. Because once that National Sunday Law comes and you think that you've got time to come around and accept the Sabbath, you're not. Because it's too late then. You need to accept the Sabbath now and come out of Babylon. Get into the Sabbath and get into this Word of God and read it. Um, 
But that, yes, it does. But that is not talking about the, that is not talking about a secret rapture. I am going to read to you in Revelation what it says. Okay, I got a, I got a passage I'm going, to, I'm going to read to you that's in Th Thessalonians. That's going to shoot that secret, th secret rapture theory right out the window. And I have been reading this for many, 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 many um, uh, periscopes. And I'm going to read it again. It's 1 Thessalonians 4, verses ch ch chapter 4. Verses um, 13 to 18. And I'm going to read this to you. And there's one verse in there, chapter 16, or verse 16, that shoots that secret rapture theory right out the window. I'm going to read this to you. And the people that, that don't want to accept it, that's that's your, that, that, then if you don't want to believe what the Bible says, then, then I'm, then I don't want to tell you. Okay. Then, um, okay. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning, concerning, Concerning those which are asleep, that you sorrow, sorrow not, as others which have no hope. For we, will, for we believe that Jesus died for and rose again. Even so, even them also which sleep in, sleep in his, in, in, in him. Jesus will, it's going to be hard, kind of hard to read because this is a smaller print, but I'll get through it. For if we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that unto the, okay. But we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now, here's the verse I want you to listen to, because this is the verse that sh shoots that secret rapture theory right out of the window. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall, call, shall be caught up together to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That shoots that secret rapture theory right out the window. His coming is going to be so bright, the wicked are going to be slain by the brightness of his coming. He's coming with a shout, with the sound of a trumpet. The secret rapture, there is no such thing. You say he's coming secretly to take, to take, to take his church away from uh, out. You are, you are in deception. And if you, if you believe the pastor, you are not believing the word of God. You're in Babylon when you believe false doctrine. Because the preachers are not going to tell you the truth on that. They're going to have you believe that you don't have to go through tribulation. They're trying to get you get you off out of it and saying that you don't have to go through tribulation because we're going to be gone out of this earth. We are not going to be gone out of this earth. And I don't apologize for telling you that. I need to tell you the truth so that you're prepared for it. Because if you take that mark of the beast, you'll wish that you had listened and you had accepted the truth in the, in the beginning. Because your Sunday keeping pastors are not going to tell you the truth. You ask your Sunday keeping pastor, what day is the Sabbath? They're going to tell you the Saturday is the Sabbath, but they're also going to tell you, we keep Sunday because of the resurrection. There's nothing in the Bible to say you're supposed to keep Sunday because of the resurrection. There's no proof. I've been going through this Bible four, four times now, four years in a row. I have not seen it in the Bible where he says, oh, we go to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. It's just not there. So you don't believe everything your pastor said. You've got to believe God. When you start putting your faith and trust in man and not God, you are going to stay in darkness. That's where a lot of people are right now. The Sunday keepers are in darkness because they're, they're listening to their pastor. They're leaning on his every, every word. But is he telling you the truth like it is in the word of God? No. A lot of times they're getting, they're, they'll get into the word of God, yes. But they, they put into the, into the passages what their meaning of it instead of what it really means. Or they'll take one passage and that's it they don't take the passages before or after to get the meaning they'll just use one passage yeah they do <coughs> that's yes left behind i don't recommend anybody watching that movie because that movie is going to really put you in deception it's, it's it's very deceptive i've not watched it and i'm not going to because i know what it's about um it is based on the on the secret rapture there is no such thing as a secret rapture where you're in an airplane Who's ever heard of it being in an airplane and passengers disappear? That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, we, we, we know there's going to be people alive when Jesus comes, but you're talking about the secret rapture. If you're going to continue to believe in the secret rapture theory, you are going to stay in Babylon. You're going to be deceived, and you're never going to come out of Babylon. I'm telling you right now, get into this word of God. Because when it talks about one should be grinding a meal, one should be taken, and one should be left, you don't know what that passage really means. That's not talking about the secret rapture. We, you don't understand. When Jesus comes back, the righteous are going to go to heaven. The wicked are going to be slain by the brightness of his coming. 
because they're going to try to hide themselves in the rocks and the mountains to hide their face from Jesus because his coming is going to be so bright and so loud and boisterous as the Bible talks about with the sound of a trumpet and the voice of the archangel. That is not secret. And Revelation 1, 7, I think it's 1, 7 or 1, 8 says, every eye shall see him. When you talk about the secret rapture, you're not talking about uh, every eye shall see him. You're talking about just certain people are going to go to heaven at that time. And, but that's not biblical. You are dis you're, you're not following the Bible. You're not going by what the Bible says. Because the Bible says, every eye shall see him. What does that mean? Every person shall see him. Not just part of them. So there is no such thing as a secret rapture. Yeah, that's the problem. The problem is they don't have, bi they don't have ver biblical verses to back it up. There is what Revelation 1, 7. Um, I think... I am going to, this person, I'm going to block them. This person, I'm going to block them right there. I'm blocking that person because they don't, they don't, they'll accept anything. Okay. Revelation 1, 7 says, behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. Even those that pierced him. That's what we're talking. There's going to be a special resurrection for those that pierced him. Um, that's right. The, that's right. Erlene. That's right. The ones taken are not going to heaven. That's right. Yes, I did. I planted the seed. You know, that's all I can do is plant the seed. But the Bible, Revelation 1, 7 says, every eye shall see it. We know there's going to be a special resurrection for those that pierced Jesus. We know the Roman soldiers pierced Jesus. The ones that pierced him, there's going to be a special resurrection for them. So these ones that say there's a secret rapture, they want to believe that because it's, it's easier for them to believe that they're going to be raptured out instead of being being here for the tribulation. But I cannot let people believe that. I have to tell them the truth. They have to get into the word of God and study for themselves. I'm not going to come in here and lie to people and say, oh, there's such a thing as a secret rapture and you don't have to worry about it because you'll be gone. No, these preachers that preach that way, that is not right. They're, they're misleading the people. They're putting them in deception and darkness. The problem of it is they don't realize they are responsible for their flock. They are responsible to tell the truth. And a lot of those Sunday-keeping preachers, unless they get into the truth of God, as it is in the Word of God, they are not going to make it to heaven. They are going to be lost. And that's sad. I don't want any of them lost. That's right. He wants all of us to see him. But unfortunately, not everybody's going to be ready for him to come. We know that he's coming as a thief, the, as a thief in the night. And basically what that passage means is Stephen Bohr, when he was here in Oregon a year ago in December, this, this month, he said that... It, the thief in the night means those are the people who are not waiting for him. They're not ready for him. It'd be the un, the you know, not the ones that are that are ready, like the righteous. But it'd be the wicked people. They're because we know the people aren't going to be ready for him. We know that that uh, people are 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 doing their own thing. They're going to be in their sin right up to the very end. Are they ready for Jesus to come when they're doing their own thing? No, because they don't feel they have to get ready. You know. Oh, I'll just continue what I'm doing and I'll wait until the last minute. But they don't realize. Um, <clears throat> that's that's your opinion. I block people when they're a distraction. That person was a distraction. Oh, yes, I do too. And Pastor Bohr came came a year ago in, this month to a church, another church in, in Oregon, here in Oregon, uh, that uh, I could not periscope it because it wasn't appropriate, but he he preached on on the tribulation and that, and it was a very inspiring. And that's the first time I ever met him in person. He is very very good. He he knows his word of God, and I and I don't and, you know I don't claim to be a Bible scholar like Stephen Bohr by no means. I mean Philip was twenty years old and he knows the Bible better than I do. Praise the Lord for that. But I'm learning. The more I get into the Word of God, the more I'm learning. And by coming on here, it's helping me to learn things too because people are bringing things to my mind that I had forgotten about. You know, we just have to be ready for what's to come. Be prepared for the tribulation. Don't plan on the secret rapture, but be prepared for the tribulation. Because if you're prepared for the tribulation, you'll be ready for it when it comes. Um... <laughs> Well, I'm, that person would not going to believe anything anyway. That person believed in the secret rapture. I can unblock that person eventually. I'm not unblock, I can't unblock them right now because I'm not home. I'll unblock them from eventually. But I want, that, I want you to understand, there is no such thing as a secret rapture. Yes, Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, there were people that were resurrected, yes. 
They're up in heaven now. Yes, and there were people saved at that time. But we also know that he's coming back and he's coming back one time to get his the church. But it's not secretly because that's not biblical. Well, I just read to you Revelation 1, 7 says, every eye shall see him. What does that mean? It doesn't mean some eyes will see him. Every eye shall see him. Because when they talk about a secret rapture, they're just having some people are going to be, uh, be raptured out and not everybody. You got him coming twice you got him coming secretly and then you got him coming for his church later on again that's not biblical there is no such thing as that you've got to get into the word of god and read it and study it to show yourself approved because you're doing exactly what your sunday keeping pastors are telling you you don't listen to what man says don't even listen to me you get into the word of god and listen to what the word of god's telling you i'm only telling you what the word of god says however but you don't listen to your pastors because your pastors are going to tell you wrong um I understand that. I will unblock that person later. Um, that's right. Unsaved people, that's right. They're not going to be looking for them. You're right. They're not. And I, I apologize for blocking that person. I will unblock that person when I get home. I, I can't unblock that person right now. I'll unblock it later. But that person was I'm, I, But that person was a distraction, was talking about the secret rapture. There is no such thing as a secret rapture. I want everybody to understand in here. I want you to be saved. I want you to get into the Word of God and study it for yourself to realize what the Bible is trying to tell you. Don't just put your own spin on it. The problem of it is a lot of these Sunday keeping pastors put their own spin on it. They get the Bible to say what they want it to say or what they think it says instead of what it really says. And you don't do that. You can't put your own spin on it. And unfortunately, um, it does, it, that's right, Erlene. It doesn't. It, it it doesn't make sense. You're right. It doesn't make sense that there's a secret rapture and then he's coming again. I, you know, when I was in a Lutheran church, they never talked about the second coming of Christ. He's only coming once. Is right. They never talked about the second coming of Christ. Now, whether they whether the Lutheran church believes in the secret rapture or not, I have no idea since they never talked about it. But. I've never really heard about the secret rapture until I became a Seventh-day Adventist and people kept brought, brought it to my attention. Um, that's right. He's going to come for his church. He's going to take his church back with him. That's right. He's going to take the, one, the righteous to church to heaven with him and the wicked are going to be slain by the brightness of his coming because they are going to want the rocks and the mountains to fall on him. Because, you know, Jesus could come in the very uh, midnight. He could come into total darkness, but his coming is going to be so bright you know, it says he's coming with clouds and every every eye shall see him. Basically, you can consider those clouds his angels because he's coming back with his angels. And his coming is very, very bright. We're all going to see him. No, the Bible says every eye shall see him. The wicked are going to see him coming too. You don't understand. The wicked are going to see him coming, but they're going to be slain by the brightness of his coming. They're going to try to hide themselves in the rocks and the mountains because they don't want to look on the face of Jesus because they know that they're not saved, that what they've done is wrong. So they'll try to hide. It says, every eye shall see him. I'm going by what the Bible says, every eye. That means every person that's alive is going to see Jesus come. Not just some people, but every, that's why I say you can't have a secret rapture because that, you, that because then you're only saying that some people are going to see Jesus come and not everybody. You're having him come secretly, but there is no such thing. Um, it's i've read the scripture to you if you don't want to li listen i've read it to you i don't have to read your scripture i told you he's coming with and every eye shall see him it's revelation 1 7 every eye shall see him even those that pierced him um that's exactly right every eye shall see him i read to you Re revelation 1 7 and i will read it to you again is what what revelation 1 7 says and if you don't accept what the bible says then I'm then I feel sorry for you. Then woe unto you. Because when when the Bible says every eye shall see him, that's exactly what it means. The righteous are going to see him come, the wicked are going to see him come, the righteous are going to heaven, the wicked are going to be slain by the brightness of his coming, because they can't stand to look at the face of Jesus. Um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, new heaven and new earth. Yeah, that's 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 right. I'm going to read to you Revelation 1, 7 again. And for that person that that's wants to be a kind of be a distraction, I'm going to read it to you again. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kingdoms of the earth shall mourn, kindred shall mourn because of him. They're going to wail and mourn because of him. That's what the wicked are going to do. Every eye shall see him. 
Um, that's right, it's going to blow their doctrines right out of the water. And like I said, that First Thessalonians 4, verse 16, blows that secret rapture theory right out the window. Because it says he's coming with a shout, with the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of the archangel. How is that secret? That's not secret. How can that be secret, people? When it says he's coming with a shout and the sound of a trumpet and his archangel, that's sure not secret at all. Uh, <clears throat> we are promised mansions. John John fourteen one to three is one of the famous passages where it talks about he's setting up mansions for us. He's preparing mansions for every one of us, but unfortunately, not everyone is going to go to heaven. But you know, the holy city is big enough for everybody to go into. That's right. God is a consuming fire. And those that, that, that say that the wicked are going to burn forever and ever, they don't, that's not doctrine either. Either. That's right. The Bible does not lie. You need to read it and get into it and study it for yourself. Don't just listen to your pastor. If your pastor reads the Bible on Sunday, you get into, or in church, you get into the Bible and you follow it too. But don't just take what your pastor says. Because a lot of times, like I said, they're going to put their own little spin on it. And they're going to have the... Past passages, um, uh, they're, they're going to interpret a lot differently than what it really is. Welcome, good to see you. And they're going to interpret their their own way, not way it what the meaning of it really is. And you know that's sad when you start interpreting it to your to your liking instead of what it really says. Um, that <clears throat> he is coming with air. yes, that's right, Erling. He's coming with his angels. When it says he's coming in the clouds and every eye shall see him. What it means is those are his angels. His coming is so bright. Those are his angels. They're coming out like clouds. Yes, very bright. So that's what I'm saying. How can there be a secret rapture when it's going to be very, it's going to be, it, it can't be secret when we're going to be able to see him come. When it's going to be so bright, we're going to see him come. And we're going to hear him with the shout and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of the archangel. That's not secret at all. So like I say, when they talk about the secret rapture, they better get into their Bible and start reading it because the Bible says, Every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him. We know there's going to be a special resurrection for those that put him, put him, that put him on the cross. The Roman centurion, all the Roman soldiers, there's going to be a special resurrection for them. We know that. People just like to interpret the Bible the way they want to instead of what it really, what it really, really says. They, you know, it's easier for them to interpret their own way. It's easier for people to believe that we're going to go to heaven and Jesus is coming back before the tribulation. Than to, than to believe we're here, we're going to be here during the tribulation because they feel that God's going to make us suffer. You don't understand the tribulation. Do you think that God really wants, wants this to happen? He has to do this. Do you think he wants to destroy the wicked? He takes no delight in the death of the wicked. He doesn't de take delight in that at all, but he has to do what he has to do. They have turned their back on him and he's told, he, he pleads with people, but he can only plead so long. They're not going to accept it anyway. Yes, raptureTruth.com. People need to get in and look at that. Those people in here that believe that that the that the wicked are going to burn forever and ever, that is also not biblical. That's also Babylon to believe that the people are going to burn forever and ever, because they're not. How is that a loving and merciful God to make everybody burn forever and ever? That's not a loving and merciful God. I know, He is kind. The only, the only way the sin is going to be destroyed is by destroying the sin bearer and destroy. You have to destroy it completely. If if Satan is allowed to burn forever and ever, sin still exists. You've got to get rid of sin. You've got to get rid of it completely. We know this world is going to be destroyed. It's, it's going to be destroyed completely. The wicked are going to burn up and Satan is going to burn up not to be anymore because Malachi 4 talks about they're going to be ashes under the soles of our feet and they're going to be a stubble when you burn something in the trash does it remain does anything remain no the, it, all there are are ashes there's nothing remains so that's exactly how it's going to be for the wicked people they're going to burn up they're going to be as as so uh, dust under the soles of our feet we're going to be able to stomp them into the ground they're not going to be any more they're not going to they're 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 not going to be any more they're not going to go to heaven they're they're suffering the second death we know that when, like I said, when Jesus comes back, the righteous are going to go to heaven. The wicked are going to be slain by the brightness of his coming. And you know where they're going to be on the, during that thousand years? They're going to be on the ground for the vultures to eat. And after the thousand years, then the wicked are raised to take over the holy city. And they're going to try to take over the holy city because they want to get inside. Satan is right there amongst them. You know, he's going to, he's going to have a thousand years to 
think about what he's done. But that's not going to change him because he's going to be right back to his old tricks, trying to to get his evil angels and the wicked people to on his side to to turn against us and try to destroy us. He's trying to he wants to get inside the city because they know they get inside the city and they touch the tree, they're going to live forever. But we know that that's not going to happen. God's going to rain fire down from heaven. He's going to destroy them. What makes it eternal? He talks about the eternal fire. What makes it eternal is because God is the is the fire. He just He's going to destroy them. The fire itself is not eternal, but the punishment is. Because once they are burned up, that is it. They are kaput. They, are not, they won't go to heaven. That's it for them. They are done for. Sin and death will be destroyed once and for all. You're right. The judgment is. Once once they're destroyed, it's going to be destroyed for good. Um, that's right. We have to get through the tribulation to see if we love. That's exactly right to prove that we love God or not. We don't know. God, God only knows. He knows the end from the beginning. He sees the end from the beginning. He knows who's going to be saved and who isn't. But there is coming a day when we're going to have to choose. That day is coming upon us very, very soon. We're going to have to choose. Are we going to be on God's side or are we going to be on man's side? If you're on man's side, you better come on God's side but quick. Because you can't stay on man's side and expect, expect to be saved. Because you won't be. And I don't apologize for telling the truth in here. Because the truth will set you free. The truth is the truth. I have to get this truth out. The truth is very hard to comprehend sometimes. And I suppose it's hard for people to comprehend that there is going to be such a thing as a tribulation. And we're not going to be here for it. Because they feel that God is loving and kind. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. That God is loving and kind. And he's not going to have his people suffer. But we know that we are going to have to suffer. We are going to suffer persecution. Some of us are going to lose our lives because the Bible does talk about in Revelation, John the Revelator saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. We know we're going to have to lose our lives. Some of us are going to lose our, our we're going to have our heads chopped up. We have to be ready for that. But what would it be hard for us to die for 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 our faith? It shouldn't be. Uh, that's right. We need God. Exactly, Mark. We need God. If people if people think they can get go through life without God, they're sadly mistaken. Welcome. Good to see you. Welcome. They can't get through life. As I have said before, if without God, they are nothing and they have nothing. You can't get through life without God. I know I can't. And I've tried to do things on my own without God's help. You know what I, what's happened? I haven't literally fallen flat on my face, but things have happened that, that shouldn't have happened because I didn't rely on God. We have to, good to see you as well. We have to rely on God for everything. We can't do anything on our own. If you try to do anything on your own, you are going to fail. You are going to fall. But he's right there to pick you right back up. But we have to, but it's a lesson learned, believe me. And I've fallen many times, but it's a lesson learned that we have to rely on God. Put our faith and trust in God at all costs. When that National Sunday Law comes, we've got to put our faith and trust in God. That he, Yes, I have failed miserably too. We have to put our faith and trust in God that he's going to see us through. And the Bible says our bread and water will be sure. He will see us through. But like I said, some of us, some of us are going to have to suffer, suffer persecution. And I believe the persecution is already here. The shaking is already going on. People are leaving the church. It's already going on. We're going to be, we're going to die for our faith. But what is it to die for our faith? Look what Jesus did for us. He gave his life willingly for us. Good morning, Regina. Welcome. He gave his life willingly for us. Can, can't we do the same for him? That we should be willing to give our lives for him. And we may have to, have to give our life for him. We do not know who's going to, who's going to have to die for him and who isn't. But we have to be prepared to possibly die for our Lord. I'm willing to die for our Lord. If, good morning. Good to see you, Regina. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. I'm willing to die for my Lord if, if necessary. We should all be willing to die for our Lord. Because that day's coming when we're going to have to stand on our own. It's like standing before a judge or a tribunal. And have to stand up for our faith. And not recant our faith. Because they're, 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 they probably are going to ask us to recant our faith. And our, our recant ask us to take the mark of the beast and say, are you going to take the mark of the beast or are you going to die? I will take the, I will die before I'll take the mark of the beast. And we all need to do that. Say, I'll die first before I'll take the mark of the beast. Because you know when you take the mark of the beast, you're going to die the second death and you're dying the eternal death. 
I don't want to die the eternal death. I want the death that I can be resurrected to see Jesus come. That's the death that I want. I don't want the eternal death, that second death. But unfortunately, a lot of people are going to choose that because they're scared. And we know there's going to be a lot of Adventists lost. Unfortunately, that's sad but true. Ellen White had talked about that. There's going to be a lot of them lost. And I think the reason for that is, is they're not either firmly grounded in the faith or they're scared because they don't want to... Um, not buy or sell because they know they know that if they if they don't uh, have the mark of the beast they can't buy or sell they can't get groceries god said god will provide for us we don't have to worry about that um that's right you're right regina we have to receive this the seal of god or, or, and not the mark there's coming a day when we're going to have to choose if we're going to be sealed with the seal of god or we're going to take the mark of the beast like i said before you can't sit on the fence it's either god or man you know, you, you can't, you have to choose, you know, and people will say, well, I'm not going to take the mark of the beast and I'm not going to keep the Sabbath either. You, that, there's no in between. It's one or the other. You know, you're either on man's side or you're on God's side. You can't, you have to choose whose side you're going to be on. Because people don't realize there's a day coming that is going to be very severe. That testing time is very severe. And I think it's coming upon us, whether we realize it or not. Persecution is already here. We've got a terrible testing time coming. How are we going to uh, are are we going to stand up to the test? Are we going to be willing to, to take the test and pass the test? That's that's what God's going to do. He's going to test us. Are we willing to pass it? You know, I don't want to fail the test, and I hope you don't want to. You don't fail it either, because that time is is coming very very soon. People like to say, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'm not worried about it." You know. It'll be fine. I'll just continue to do what I'm doing. And when that time comes, I'll just decide that I'm going to turn turn around, turn from my wicked ways. It's a little bit too late then. You need to do it now while you still have the opportunity. So I'm, I'm here to say to anybody that if you're in Babylon, no matter what it is, whether you're going to church on Sunday or whether you're in a sin, you can still be in Babylon in your sin, a harbored sin that you keep committing. That is Babylon. It doesn't have to be Sunday only. Um, that's, that's true. Only the true believers will be in the kingdom. You're exactly right, Erlene. We have to be, stand up. We have to say, I'm not going to fall for anything that Satan has to offer because he's doing everything he can at this moment to get us to fall down. And he knows that once he gets us ta fallen, taking us down, we're not going to be able to get back up. That's right. That's, it's right, it's just, the preparation is being done now. Are, are we prepared for it? You know, yes, right, our faith is going to be severely tested. But I, I, I am honest here when I say that I don't know if I'm as ready for the tribulation as I should be. I just pray to God that I am going to be ready when that time comes. Because it's, it's very, very hard to know and to be, and to when that time's coming, we know it's coming on us, but to be ready for it. And don't take that mark of the beast. I, I, I'm a little a, a frightened a little bit, but then again, I'm not because I know I have God on my side and I'm going to stand up for God. But still, the thought is behind is, is still there. Am I going to yield or am I not? It is very, very scary because, yeah, we, that's, you're, that's, you're, you're right. You're exactly right. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Because it's going to, it's a very trying time coming upon us. That is not going to be a time that any of us want to go through. But we have to go through it. Look what the Israelites did. They went through it in Egypt. They had to go through those, those plagues that were put on them. They had the, the lamb, lamb's blood on the doorposts. That's how God knew that, 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 they were, that they were the ones that weren't destroyed. Hi from Germany. Welcome. But, we, but we're going to have to stand the test of our faith. And I, I do believe right now that we are being tested. You know, people come in here. I'm being tested too. We're all being tested. I get persecuted too. We're all being tested. We're all being persecuted. It's what we do with those tests and that persecution that counts. Are we going to stand up and we're going to say, I'm not going to let Satan take me down. I'm not going to yield to what he has to offer because that's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to destroy this whole world. He's going to be added after the thousand years of peace. We know that. After he's had a thousand years to reflect on what he's done to, in this world, he is still going to try to, to uh, take over the holy city and get inside and destroy us. He still wants to do that, but we know he's not going to be able to, and thank God he's not. I will sure be glad when he's destroyed, 
because he has wreaked so much havoc in this world and he continues to do so. You know, he doesn't care about the wicked people. The wicked people are even following him. Do you think he cares about them? No, I don't think he even cares about himself. He knows he has a short time, so he's going to do everything he can to take as many people down with him as he possibly can. That's where we have to stand fast. We have to say, no, I am not going to yield to Satan no matter what, because he wants to take you down. And, and you know something? If he takes you down far enough, he's going to keep you there. He's going to have you doing things you wouldn't normally do. And he's going to take you places you wouldn't normally go. I don't want that. And like I said, him being a spirit being, he can come in your house and he can he can come through your door. Your door can be completely locked up. And he'll come right through the door and invite himself in, whether you want him there or not. He comes in my home so often and invites himself in. I just have to tell him to get out. That's why we have to keep rebuking the old devil. He'll eventually flee, but then he comes back and he does the same thing all over again. He is on us the most, the ones that are keeping the Sabbath the most. And the ones that are preaching the gospel, he's after me the most. I know he's probably after Regina. He's probably after Dr. O and Simeon. Anybody that gets on and preaches the message, this, this Latter-day message, he's after us the most because he hates the fact that we're giving the message. And I know that's why when I come here on Periscope, that I've been harassed because the devil does not like it. The devil wants me to stop coming in here and stop preaching the word because he doesn't like it. So he's bringing somebody in here to harass me so that I will get um, tired of it and just leave Periscope. And I'm here to say that I am not going to leave Periscope no matter what that person tries to do. I am here for, for good. As long as I'm, I'm, I'm able to give these messages, I am. And as long as Periscope exists, I'm going to give these messages. And if that guy wants to keep trying to harass me or keep doing what he, he does, he can try all he might. But I am not going to give up. I'm going to keep praying for him. And hopefully someday he will come to the knowledge of the truth. But I do thank you po people for reporting him to Twitter for me because I have tried it. And I'm going to try it again when I get off of here. I'm going to try to report him again because I know what his... his um, yeah, you have to flee from the devil. We have to run as fast as we can. You know, and hopefully the devil doesn't catch up to us. Because, you know, you have God on one side and you have the devil on the other side. God will whisper something in your ear to, to help us understand what we should be doing. Of course, the devil will come along. It's like sitting on your shoulder, if you want to say. God, you got the angel of God sitting on one shoulder. you got the devil sitting on the other side. God will say something to you and the devil comes on. No, you don't have to listen to God. Listen to me. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. So unfortunately, a lot of people have listened to the devil and have got themselves in a predicament that they're in. And it's sad. You know, they've chosen the, that way of, of living. I wish they would come out of their sins, but um, he, um, he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't have a Periscope profile. He's just got a Twitter profile. I have not been able to block him for that very reason because he's just on, because he comes on here through Twitter because I share through Twitter. So he comes on here. He wants to sit on Twitter all day long, I guess. So he comes on here through Twitter because I share with Twitter. But if you can if you can find him, Jimmy Ballsuck is his is his username. Um, if you can, some people in here have already been able to report him. I'm going to try to report him again. But we need to report people like that because he's trying to get me to stop doing these periscopes, and I'm not going to stop, no matter what, <clears throat> because I feel that God wants me to do this, and I'm going to keep going. I think I'm going to call it quits for now because my voice is trying to go hoarse on me. I don't have any water with me. Let me sing the sanctuary song, and I'll call this to a close. And I hope you can all come in and watch the replay. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Let us all be a living sanctuary for Jesus. And as John 8, 32 says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set, shall, shall set you free. I thank you all for coming in. The live viewers, as well as the replay viewers, you all have a blessed day. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great birthday, birthday Philip. God bless you. Take care, and see you later. Bye-bye.